I will call the school plan and planning um, committee meeting to order November 2nd at 6.30 p.m. We do have a quorum, and I'll take a motion to accept the minutes from our last meeting. Motion so, Second. You got that, Teresa? Gotcha. Okay. All righty. Um, next on the agenda, we have um, the boundary study uh, survey results. And I think uh, Ms. Temple, Mrs. Temple will be presenting, so I'll yeah. pass it over to you. Okay, thank you. I'm going to pass the out. This is actually the survey results. So everything that was up there, you have, even including the um, information uh, open ended. Okay? So there's about 400 statements. Does everyone have one? I think so. Okay. We have guests in the like, public. Hi. Yeah, you want to send one? You want to? Thank you. Sorry. There you go. Okay. So as you know, um, we did send out an email to several people it was in the uh, the mayor's email to everyone. I know because you know, it was here so I get it too. So it was in her emails to uh, residents and then we also made sure, that, so we have staff, parents, and um, some elected officials who all uh, submitted the survey, right? And answered some questions. So we have about 1,380 respondents which is great. It's probably our best results of any of our surveys. Um, so, and people have a lot of lots to say. So you'll see even in the back, there's about four, over 400 um, statements. Okay. So yes. Question. So where it says town resident, because parents and guardians, they're all residents too. Mm -hmm. This just means non. It's community members. Who community don't members don't have kids in the right. same district. Okay. Mm -hmm. And some staff members mm -hmm. chose the as a parent guardian instead of the staff. Right. Okay, so this is our agenda for today. We're gonna to go over the rationale so we understand the reason why we are here today, right? So we just don't want a reenactment of what occurred before. So it was very important for you all to um, have a survey that uh, spoke to the constituents, right? So everyone who wanted mm -hmm. to say something were able to fill this up, right? Uh, so we're grateful for that. Uh, we will review um, the macro survey data, um, and this is again to inform SLAM of where to go, right? So this is the whole reason behind the survey to let SLAM know they are our consultant. This is not just the district or the board um, doing it, but it's also SLAM conducting the study um, based on what the community wants and needs. Uh, then analysis and discussion of survey data. So each slide is literally going through each piece of the survey. Um, again, this is literally copied from the survey onto this paper. Um, so there's, you know, if you have any questions, please let me know. And then identification of criteria. So at the end of this, our call to action is to actually come out with the specific criteria, right? We know we have to do a couple basic things, right? So make sure that there's racial balance and social economic balance within the district. That's, you know, that's, that's that statute, right? And it's important to them. All right, so let's get to it. 1,380 responses, and again here, you know, I think everybody reviewed this already. <laughs> um, the uh, the breakdown of stakeholders, right? So parent and guardian is the majority of uh, the people who responded, but we also have um, a small amount. It was actually nine people um, who did uh, who are town elected officials who just put that as their people. All right. I don't have too much context, but Ms. Temple, you might have mentioned this earlier, that almost 1,400 responses was actually 
quite remarkable. That's what she right? <laughs> For those of you who've been on the board, I'm not sure that they are. So uh, just a big uh, appreciation to our community members. We have staff members who completed this as well. Almost 75% of our families. And then um, I know for a fact that we had town council members uh, submit uh, certain responses as well. So incredibly impressed uh, with uh, the action we got out of this. And, stakeholder voice is such an important part of our work. Okay. We are on to the second question. So this is based on priority. So please record that the most important redistricting guidelines were SLAM to consider in their study. So we're looking at, um, if you look at this graph, you'll see that if yeah, bottom of page one, you'll see in the blue first priority, second priority for each one. So we wanted to look at all of the, uh, how many people said that it is the first priority for them to talk about the continued neighborhood school concept. Concept That's overwhelmingly very important for um, people who live and work here, right? Um, so I think that's important to note. The second priority, ensure equal class sizes across elementary schools, so that's right there. Um, <coughs> prior priority, disrupt the least number of students. May I ask a question? Sure. So, for example, let's just take the first block. Right. Over 600 um, mm -hmm. said first priority, mm -hmm. but then there's all those those four other um, columns right. who said yes. So what's the total of people who said it was first priority? So uh, 683 for that specific one. Oh, I see, I get it now, right? Yeah, never mind. And then Tired. each one has yeah. one. So another one was like 523. I see. Or 593, so it's right under. Right, um, so that's how I basically wrote it out yep. so you can know um, the priorities. And then fourth priority is converting elementary schools to K-5 to model and middle schools to 6-8. Um, fifth priority, minimize student travel time five plus. I try to write everything out, which just makes, I don't know, helps me out <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> just in case you, yeah. you know, answers a lot of questions. And then the next question, on a scale of zero to 10, how important is it that Stratton Public Schools move the sixth grade elementary classes into the middle schools? So you'll see here, we have people who said, you know, this isn't really a priority for us, right? So that's the zero, 34.8%, but you also have 16.4% who said this is um, a major priority. Right. So if you look at it, there's, you know, there's a little spectrum there. Um, there's a little bit of people in the middle who are saying, I could go either way, or I'm closer to one end than the other. Um, so. So with that, if you cut, the, if you cut it in half, mm -hmm. push it either side, it's about, it works out to about 54.1, and mm -hmm. the other one's 40, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. 40. I know one of the questions that we had, or I had wanted to ask is, is it a better educational model for the, for the sixth grade students? Not necessarily what was, um, you know, what the public's, because this works out about 50-50, so there's no clear definition there, but the driving criteria behind this was, is it a better model for the, for the sixth graders to be in a higher school or a lower school? And, that, and, and we, didn't, we never answered that, and members of this board didn't think it was important to ask the question that way, but really still doesn't answer the question, mm -hmm. does the staff feel that this is an important, that it would be a worthy endeavor to move those kids up to make the educational environment for sixth graders better? Yeah, so, if you look inside of the statements, mm -hmm. there are people who stated that it's not a good model, but there's also people who say it should be a seven to nine model, not a six mm -hmm. to eight. There's people who, yeah, it's all, it's 
a lot. So if you go through the 400. So simple, that was actually one of the things I was looking for. Mm -hmm. I see, like, I love that you give us the raw commentary, <laughs> but I was looking for a, sum, a summary a of what you took away from those mm -hmm. comments to say a lot of comments were touching on this or, right? Like, well, a lot of, or not. So. I could, from what I read, mm -hmm. a lot of comments were really based off of what happened before. before. And people say we don't need to redistrict at all, so, right? So that's what I—that's like the main summary the of both. Yeah. Or sentiment. Yeah. Right. Right. For the staff members, it was about 280 plus or minus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay. there's some people who did not write anything. Yeah. Right. So there was mm -hmm. 1,380 total responses, but only 400 and something people actually wrote statements. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm, I'm just saying there's. A, of the, number, of the number of people who took the survey, about 280 of them were SBS yes. employees. And, that's, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're all in the educational or this, you know, the K through eight yeah. model right. to right. have right. some and it's knowledge. And it's not just certified yeah. staff. Yeah. You know? So to your point, one of the things, probably kill some trees here, <laughs> but we, I wanted the raw data yeah. here so we had that Absolutely. conversation here because we also wanted to hedge against, you know, you know putting on an executive survey based on our analysis because we wanted an organic opinion. Um, so part of that conversation should happen tonight. Okay. Okay. And that, that was the second part, which was more than two additional suggestions about what should be considered I think about redistricting. So we have 400 plus open-ended responses out of the 1,380 respondents. Um, and then it's literally every single one that responded is up here. Um, so yeah. So it's, it's a mixture. So like before, some people, you know, say we need to leave it alone. Mm -hmm. um, but you also have some other who talk about uh, equity of resources. They also talk about um, making sure there's teacher support and coverage, um, make sure there's diversity in schools. Um, and then there's some who question everything. So around ACs in schools, um, what's going on with that? Then they ask, I read one that it was somewhere in here that was all capitalized. Um, uh, oh yeah, asking about if you do access graders to middle schools, where, where are we getting the money to build that um, out? And then if you, and then if you really want to make some changes, turn Johnson to a middle school and then have six to eight, then we should have more racially balanced school districts. Um, then you have on well, a couple each page you have kids should be kept in their respective neighborhoods so that kind of speaks to what people actually put on the survey right um, and the you know the closed ended questions like you need to pick one mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so you'll see some that fall in line with um, with that and then you have some people say what parents choose a high school so I know we talked about elementary, but some people went to high school. Um, so yeah, um, and then you know people's opinions, right? So people purchase property in certain neighborhoods, expecting their children <laughs> to attend the closest school. Um, that social economic balancing waivers for school choice. Would it, would yeah. it make sense to give some time to the group to come through? Mm -hmm. Some of the narrative piece and just annotate whatever stood out to you, and then we can bring that back to conversation. Yeah. There's a lot of content, a lot of responses there, over 400. So perhaps just grab a pen, a few responses, mark it up, and then a lot of conversations about what stood out to you.
good stuff in here, right? Two E seven. Two E seven. Finally, that that one might actually pique Ooh. your interest. Mine? Wow. You're you're a real estate person. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no one says we can't have a little. Mm -hmm. Actually, some pretty funny comments in here, too. Yeah. <laughs> a very colorful community as well. Using a student population. How would we do that? One thing that stood out for me is this, the transportation piece. Mm -hmm. right? And I was having a conversation recently, came up with a town hall meeting as well. Uh, it shows up a few times in, uh, in the service. Three twenty nine was from somebody who's not paying attention. That's actually something we've accomplished. Thanks, Mike. 
<laughs> I haven't given you that credit for that since the start. Can I ask what's the, what's the average classroom size that kids? It depends by grade level. Okay, because um, some of the years they want to remove 12 kids out of every classroom. My God. It's not, it's not likely. I know, I'm just... Well, it would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> we need some more buildings and for kids. Jesus. I mean, in, in some districts, like, that's in the teens is what their class size is off because it gives them so much more connection, yeah, and, yeah. you know, with the students. Beyond um, its purpose for the work that SLAM is doing, there's still a heavy amount of useful content and the submission um, from our families that can inform you know, classroom work, facilities design, uh, board priorities, and all those different things. Um, so I think this is information that should certainly be our Absolutely. Mm -hmm. What did you? Um, the survey that you sent to the principals, what what kind of information did you get from that? Because theirs was a little more detailed and specific to their buildings. I'm curious what the information from that. Yeah, it was that wasn't a, form, a survey in the formal sense. What it was was a physical, it was a blueprint design. Yeah. And what SLAM wanted them to do was identify the spaces that are currently used mm -hmm. for instruction. Mm -hmm. So um, when they talk about capacity study. Yeah. Committee asked the board to expand that agreement for the middle school study as well. So we did that. Mm -hmm. So that was the survey. It was the physical plan survey. And that information has been sent to SLAM, and yes. they'll put it in a way for us to, to understand. So we use exactly. So the building capacity. Uh, it gets our contract language for the classroom sizes. Mm -hmm. They have all that information as well. But I know they'll use that information to inform their work, but I meant. Will they provide us with some sort of executive summary of what they gathered from that information, or do we have anything from that information? They will. So okay. their time is actually the right um, on Friday on Monday. I just need to meet them. They want to convene a meeting. Okay. So um, I wanted to have this meeting, yes. get the feedback from the committee, and we'll always be able to meet. I know we discussed, we looked at tomorrow as the final meeting. Okay. So likely next week we'll be doing this later. So based on this, um, these results, committee members, are you in agreement with what you know um, the response, the survey responses highlighted as the top three priorities? Are there any that you know you disagree with or want to talk more about? Because the top three. Continue the neighborhood, you know, model, which that's right. Um, ensuring equal class sizes is a big, big, big one. And um, waste disruption. So. No comments. We're cool with those three going to the board as our recommendation. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're fairly generic and straightforward. So, yeah, it makes sense. It's kind of things you would expect it. I think for me, the big one, I, I, I'm glad it made it, was the class size, right? Because that had been such a huge issue um, at many of the elementary schools. So I'm glad it made the top three. Has SLAM seen all the comments? No. So when this committee um, identifies the criteria, mm -hmm. we're going to forward this we're forward the criteria to them along with this, uh, with this document. Because I could kind of see some commonalities and threads in reading through them. And if there are consultants, I'd like to see them kind of 
convert the 400 comments into a you know a pie chart with rough you know yeah. sort of rough generalized descriptions but you know I'd like to see the percentage of blue sixth grade versus don't move sixth grade as a comment because some of those comments specifically say they were made by staff members for staff members in like other district saying this is what our experience is in the district I live in mm -hmm. and work in. I'd be willing to bet once you break it down, you're going to find 50 50 on every, every so issue. Pack, you know. per personally, I could talk about that for hours because when my family lived in Westchester County, I started in the fall in the sixth grade in the middle school, and then we moved December of that year to Connecticut where I'd moved into a K to six school. Mm -hmm. So I literally I, I moved halfway through that year. So, you know, I kind of saw what sixth grader gets exposed to as an eighth grader and then uh, yeah for lack of a better word it was a step backwards it's interesting because i have a sixth grader and he is petrified to move to middle school it's too much it's too big there's too much responsibility oh my god i have to find new classrooms i have to get to know multiple teachers and at the same time he says to me there's all these little kids around me all day and he doesn't like it, right? And one of the comments in here, which I thought was a good one, is, you know, in sixth grade, these kids are still expected to walk in quiet lines. And I've, I've witnessed teachers sort of being a little harsh, trying to keep them quiet, mm -hmm. you know, which is, I understand why, but it's, it's also difficult, <laughs> especially in that sixth grade range. So, you know, I don't think that there is any perfect answer and I think one, uh, one child can feel both ways at the same time. I think, I think the kid, when the kids get to seventh grade and they go to middle school, in the first week or two, it's a little rough for them. Mm -hmm. But then they're pretty good. I'm in my fourth, third year of two, two years to deal, take my grandkids to school. I see all of them. First time, I don't know if I could do this, Pop. And then you can do this. Just get in there, meet them. So now I'm on my third grandchild. Two more years out of the fourth grandchild. So it's, a, it's an experience, but they're good with it now. I mean, remember Miles when he was going to go, oh, I don't know, I was kidding. You don't be a baby. Girl, half the kids you went to grammar school with, or half the kids in this building went to grammar school with you. It's not like you don't know anybody. It's, they're good with it. So one of the things Mike has mentioned, um, and he mentioned it again today, is, you know, is it a better model for the students? I don't know the answer to that. Um, I, I've read both sides of it. Um, and also, something that's brought up in many of these comments, um, and what I'm also worried about is where we find the money to retrofit these schools to accommodate the students that will be going there, and the additional classrooms, staff, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, you know, that's a major consideration. I know in research that I have done, most districts who move sixth graders to middle school, do it for lack of funds. So they squeeze them into that model. Um, it's not that it was a better uh, learning model. It was always due to education funding being limited. Um, so just because we're one of few doing this doesn't mean we're doing something bad. Um, I think really, the experience that you might, the negative experience you might hear is just because they're so crowded. Like that's really, it. it's not, not that they're around younger kids or, you know. Yeah, kids are gonna, we've all, we all have kids and they don't wanna feel like they're babies, I get that, right? Like it's a complaint. Kids with siblings will complain about, but that's, he's a baby or she's a baby, right? Like you're always gonna hear that, but from a learning experience, I, I haven't found anything that said it's terrible. I could see if they move to the middle school, yeah, they may get exposed to a lot more, um, you know, changing, you know, to different classes, that, you know. So there's also that, and depending on your specific child, that could be good or bad, right? Like I know for my child, it might be something more challenging and, you know, good for her versus another person's child, so. Ready. 
I know I'm going to go home and do some reading on this. I started categorizing each yes. comment already, so I'll come up with my own little uh, grid, uh, Alan, and I want to see how it compares to slams. <laughs> <laughs> Um, was there anything else we wanted to talk about on this matter in particular? Any concerns? You know, one of the things that I would just like to like say is not even going to become an option for us is any of this K to two, three to five split elementary school mm -hmm. concept. Because I know they tried working it in Milford not too long ago, and from the parents I talked to, it was pretty much an absolute disaster. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't get out of it fast enough. And there were some comments in here about, about, it, about yeah. splitting, so. I but think when you're small, you're a small town, it might work, right, to have, but I, I feel like as much as we have that small field, Stratford's pretty big. <laughs> yeah, and I wouldn't call Milford for the small town. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> but I think the whole, the whole purpose behind the start of this is because we have to redistrict. You know, based on yeah. our, our class, class our you know smaller schools that are underpopulated, schools that are overpopulated, federally mandated racially mm -hmm. balancing, and so it's not one of these. We're not looking at this like, do we want to do this? Mm -hmm. We have to. Do we it. have it. Yeah. And, and and I think some of the, you know, some of the responses are things that are models that we're following now to some extent. You know, the neighborhood schools trying to keep some some. Uh, class size, but, but we get forced out of that because we haven't redistricted in a while, mm -hmm. and then di disrupt the least number of students, and, and that's all, I mean, kind of common sense, but it's something that we have to do, and these are good guidelines, mm -hmm. I think, to follow, but I think at the end, we, we have to, you know, follow, try to stick to these guidelines as close as possible, mm -hmm. but we have to redistrict, yeah. and, and we have to do it in a way that's the least disruptive to the kids, that we, that we get that balancing, that we get equal class sizes. Yeah. You know, so that so that we don't have lordship with one class and 26 students, and you know other schools that are, you know, and, and 26 students, and then other empty classrooms next to it, and then other schools that are packed to the gills, and, and so. The disruption piece that was the one I also brought up as a consideration because that was important. I know you said common sense, but common sense isn't common because when they shifted from what we had before to neighborhood schools they weren't considering not disrupting the kids. So I wanted to make sure that that was top of mind when we're going through whatever you know, um, concept our, comp you know, our agency that we're working with is going to put in place for us. That needs to be a consideration because we, we saw the effects of that. Um, and you would have thought it would have been common sense to not do it the way they did, but here we are right now. So what does that fit as a criteria then? Yeah. But but also any change is going to be disruptive. I mean, obviously you want to disrupt the least, least, the exactly. least number of kids and the least staff and the least whatever. But everything, any change is disruptive. You know. Yeah, but you could take a bandaid off, like whoop, or you could gently peel it off. So again, just be mindful I would rip it off. of how you rip it off. Okay, so you're. <laughs> it hurts more for less time. Oh, sweet. Oh, yeah. No, we're still reeling after how many years of ripping that Band-Aid off, so. Yeah, but um, I, I, think, well, I, think, I think it's important that the, the community knows that we have to do this. Mm -hmm. It's not just. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, no, the community knows, and knows they that, have voiced that. I know that, but I did, well, maybe some yeah. of them, but a lot of them have, don't know that. Yes, they yeah. Yeah. They, 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 they need to know that know. we're putting this yeah. effort in because yeah. it, it yeah. requires us to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's going to be whether, half yeah. the burden. I think there's probably a scene with three districts going to be public, you know, they're going to scream mm -hmm. and yell to get them with their kid or something mm -hmm. else. But we're told we have to do it. So. But there's always going to be that portion of the community because when I know, the but original if it's, moving it's better we get it out there and information out there, the easier I think I coming agree. back at it. I That's agree. Just I'm just saying, like, yes, there's going to be disruption. But again, the, the, the extent of these things can be minimized. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. With I just want to make sure everybody Just more thoughtfulness, I think. Um, you know, there were people who didn't know they were going to move to neighborhood schools, right? And it was a big thing. So there's always going to be a portion of the population that no matter how much you put out information, there's still going to be like, I did not know. Yeah, I mean, there, there is going to be a certain population and that's why that we don't pay attention to anything yeah. until, until, they walk the in, until they walk into the door yeah. that's been closed for 20 years and they say, I didn't know the door was closed. But, yeah. but it is... To your point too, making the public 
aware exactly. and not necessarily allowing them to guide the process no. because once we make a decision I think it's important that we move in that direction mm -hmm. and not be swayed by right. public opinion, yeah. opinion yeah. Um, but making them aware as aware and involved in the process mm -hmm. but not in the decision this is what we're doing this is why we're doing it keeping yeah. them updated on a regular basis so the fewest amount of people walk into that door mm -hmm. that's closed you know yeah. most people you want to Make sure they know we're going to be opening up the door. You can walk through it. So. Exactly. So two things really quick. First of all, I think we should really leave the demagnetization conversation in the past. I mean, it's practically a case study in how not to do something. And then the other thing is I would like to get kind of some input from SLAM or feedback from SLAM on what happens when people who are in favor of neighborhood schools find out that their neighborhood might have changed. Mm, yeah. Like I think a lot of the comments that I was reading in this are sort of with like a status quo or nothing's gonna happen or minimal's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. But for, for some people, th this could lead to a big change, mm -hmm. a change that they may not like or they may not be welcome to. And so there could be a comment in here that's positive under this veneer and kind of change the lines, some people's opinions may change when they find out where they're going to in the next evolution of our elementary schools. And, and I think you hear a lot about, I moved into this neighborhood because I wanted my kid to go to this town, but there's no guarantee your kid's, you know, going to go to that school. He's going to, he, you live in Stratford, you're guaranteed an education in a Stratford school. But even as a builder, I bought lots of numerous spots and had people say like, Oh, I bought my house because the, the, across the street was treed, and it was beautiful, and we loved waking up, but that's somebody's property, and, the, and then when you go to build on it, they're like, you can't do that. I bought this house because of, no, you know. We bought or the you, house, not this property. Yeah, or you buy a budding, a vacant commercial lot, and five years there, somebody comes in and, and develops the commercial lot because they had the right to do it. Like, well, but I bought my house because, no, it's not guaranteed. It, you had the benefit for a period of time, and, and now, the person who owns the property has the benefit of the, you know, developing or the school districts change or voting districts change, every, everything changes. I remember when they put a PATH program here in town. I remember when they put a PATH program in here in town, you went to the school, and then you went to this elementary school and this, this high school. My brother was chairman of the Board of Ed for all those years. Oof. People are backlash at those people. Oh, I was telling them, hey, and the federal government, the state government told them, you do it our way or your way. You're going to do it. So. Better, better keep control within your within your yeah, you know, I, I you, think, your own community. I think um, I think you hit it right on that. So there is provisions, statutory provisions that necessitate that we do do this. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that's the first step. But we can't disregard that there's an emotional quotient to this. Right. And we're still we're having a conversation in 2023 about what happened to uh, 2018 because there was an emotional piece to this. So I think you know we lead with that. Okay, full transparency, and then we do our best to honor the emotional piece of things. Mm -hmm. We talk about implementation matters, right? Yes. At the district yes. office, with the administrators, we talk about implementation. So we have to be very conscious about the emotional response and make sure that as we go to implement these changes, mm -hmm. we're responding to that for the community to the extent that we can, right? So I'm not a slow band aid person, I'm not a fast band aid person, but we gotta be able to read the room yeah. and you know, pull that band aid just accordingly. Exactly, just but, but I think communication is the key. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Right. We've seen we've seen some examples in town where communication wasn't done well and it was very rocky. And we've seen yeah. some examples where communication was from the start and, and although it wasn't everybody's ideal situation, it was known, understood, and accepted. Yeah. All right. Um, is that it? All right. We need to make our recommendation. So the three, I know Yvonne was taking notes here. So the three priority recommendations and the fourth was minimize disruption. Is that, is well, that no, that's the third. That's in there. Okay. It made the top three, so we should be covered. And number four was, was converting elementary schools. Yeah, so the three really hit on everything that we needed anyway, so that was good. And I, I mean, just for me at this point, I wouldn't be in favor of moving the sixth grade up because we don't know the answer to it yet. 
you know, is it a good, is it a, and the only answer to me for that question that came in number four is a priority, the only answer to me that would make it a realistic reason to do it, is it a better environmental situation and emotional situation for the sixth graders? And if the answer came back 50 50, but we don't know, so, you know, I don't know that we can ask on that. So, um, I know it was only put on here as a discussion item, but I want to get the committee to vote on our recommendation to the board. So, are we all in favor of recommending to the full board of education that the top three priority that SLAM is going to uh, focus on for the boundary study are the top three that was um, highlighted in the survey data? You make a motion. Motion by Bonnie. Can I get a second? I'll second. Mike seconded. All in favor? Discussion. Oh. <laughs> we discussed it already. Okay. No, I know. Okay. I, I mean, you know, Process. Just, I know. Just I, I, I think that, that these are all fairly generic yeah. in, in their nature, that the responses are all fairly generic and, and fairly straightforward. So I don't think sending it to the board. Um, I don't think we're telling people stuff they don't already know. These right. are, yeah. so. But that is what was supposed to be but the I, process. Yeah. So no, I, I agree. But I'd also from. like to review some of these comments, or mm -hmm. maybe yeah. to Mr. Llewellyn's point, have yeah. have SLAM review them and give us some, you know, some sense. kind of a flow chart as to where they all kind of are, just to see how they might impact the the, the depth of these responses. So. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is the facilities update by Mr. Rogerio. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, again, schools are just moving right along with our daily procedures that are going on. Our big project we had has just finally come to a close Which is uh, for the um, honey spot for AIP. We had our first meeting there today in the gymnasium and the night school had their first night last night. And you said this project was what? AIP, that will uh, the honey spot building. So everything is completed. We have a couple things that we're getting pricing on to update the ramps in the back and a little walkway uh, going from the sidewalk to the blacktops to make a walk around instead of through the grass. Um, stuff like that. Other than that, um, I think, it's, I think we're supposed to have a walkthrough uh, for whoever wants to go. Um, so I think whenever we come up with that. I think Mr. Board just said, Can mentioned we, scheduling we're something. We're trying to come up with it today. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so, a few options. Yeah, I think you'd be surprised how it came out. I think it was great. Yeah. Um, even though there wasn't major, you know, in the ceilings and paint, and it, it just, uh, and lighting, mm -hmm. just made it look fantastic. Is, is there any discussion, I know when you <coughs> walk through, you know, the windows were an issue and so and yeah so I brought that up mm -hmm. um, again so it's gonna end up being the next step of what we you know get some extra monies mm -hmm. and we'll change the windows out in the front is that something that the Board of Ed would do or would the town well, I'm gonna talk to the, the town capital improvement yeah. yeah and see if they will some stuff like I wanted them to do the sidewalks but since it's not a school they didn't want to cut the sidewalk through mm -hmm. um, so we're working around Everything eventually we're gonna, you know, we're gonna have to have a roof on that too. Mm -hmm. The downside to it is it's all money that to to do it is all out of pocket. There's no reimbursement rate because it's not school money. Part. That's the downside. The upside is it won't leak and ruin the building. Well, so far. <laughs> yeah. Once we do it. It's not gonna work. It's a good investment. It's a good investment. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So although not a school, it's still a municipal facility. Still is. So it's just the program avenues for funding change. Correct. So is there is there funding for a municipal? You would have to kind of go through someone on the town hall side and hall see hall if side. there's anything, programs active with funding in them yeah. for municipal buildings, as opposed to just school buildings. I brought it up with Renee, and we just kind of been hashing things yeah. back and forth. They usually run concurrent programs. Okay. So. I mean, even though the, the, the warranty on the roof is, is long gone, um, I haven't had any problems. I hate talking about it because I'm getting that one. <laughs> I hear a lot of knocks. It's supposed to snow in three weeks. Right? <laughs> um, and then we have uh, CSW who's getting ready to uh, 
little product at Chapel in Stratford High for the solar. Um, we actually just sent um, our last uh, electric bills to CSW so they can calculate uh, more accurately what our savings are between Johnson and Bunnell. So they have those now. Um, I know Eric Holberg is on vacation, but we sent them um, two days ago. We gave them all the info they needed. So I should have something back, at least by our next plan planning, that will have uh, what our cost savings are. And, and that, so the town paid for, for, all the solar. for the solar, but the savings comes directly? Uh, it goes right to the town. The savings goes to Yeah, so I, I'm on a, a monthly um, solar call with myself. The last one was just myself, Renee, and this mm -hmm. fellow from CSW. And uh, so I, I asked a question. Mm -hmm. I said, could you tell me what the savings were? And I know it wasn't much at that time, mm -hmm. but those checks go directly to the town. So the, so the savings is created by energy generated from the solar panels? Correct. And that's dumped back into the system and monitored and... It's all, yeah, it's all completely monitored. If okay. you look in the back at the now, mm -hmm. there's six units on the outside mm -hmm. um, down by the, um, the baseball field on the building. You'll see them. They're okay. big units. Um, Whatever savings we get, they, you know, they give you an estimation of what your savings would be. Naturally, it was on the real high side. Yeah. Um, but I know, it, again, it depends on the weather. So. But that, but that savings is in the form of electricity that's generated and dumped back in, into the system, not necessarily energy that's created and dumped into the school. Correct. Okay. That's exactly how it is, and that whatever savings goes back to the town, okay. you know, check. Yep. Okay. From each school. So they're getting ready now to load um, Stratford High mm -hmm. and um, <coughs> all the product and get ready to rock and roll. Um, so, so, is, so does the town pay to put this solar stuff in? It did. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Any update on the capital improvement? So uh, we did this year was um, we had a. Google sheets out there that went to all the principals, and we let them put what they wanted. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to now go back and we'll figure out how we're going to all look at it together. Okay. Um, some stuff we I looked at it briefly with uh, Pam and Jeannie the other day. Uh, some stuff kind of eliminated because it was you know just not feasible that it was going to happen. Uh, but then I had asked her I said we need to get with plan planning, yep. so we can all look at it. And, decide with what. A lot of the stuff I had no pricing. Mm. Um, I had talked with some other guys from the town. Uh, like playgrounds is a big deal. Mm. So I know the pricing for the playground. I got it updated. But we could talk about everything that was on there. Some of them had very little and others obviously is flooring is a big deal. We know our roofs are all up to par so there's not much talk with the roofs. Um, windows windows were put in some of the schools like Wilcox and it was like nine years ago when I first got here um, and they're just tough to open so mm. um, I do know that uh, Brian Snyder was kind of going around pricing that stuff out so I have everything and then we could just sit down and we could hash it out and see what we want to do will you be sending that to the committee members as ahead as, of time so yeah. that we can kind of Absolutely. come with questions as soon as we get everything all put together and what, what's the time? I know the council doesn't typically vote on it till May, March, June. What's that? The capital improvement plan. It's it's done during budget season. And I think this year they put it off. I think, but typically it's yeah budget season, so it's May, June or so. Yeah. Um, is is there a time frame when we have to submit it to the town? I don't know when Pam submits them to the town. I can tell you right now that. Uh, Always. I it's, it was it's in like a, November or something. It's in advance. It's before I present my budget yeah. to the It's in the winter yeah. months. Because I remember the last time we were upset that we missed it and we didn't get to review yeah. the but, it, but it's not like December. We're talking no, next so. year. Kind of I want to, we're going to, we'll have it ready for it to go out to everybody because it's not a huge capital plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, they really didn't put a lot down and uh, some stuff we, we eliminated. A lot of the small stuff, painting and stuff that really shouldn't be in capital. Mm -hmm. Painting's not a capital. Okay. That kind of stuff's why I eliminated it already. 
Um, and then once we put it together, and then we'll ship it out. Yeah. Um, two quick questions for Rich. One related to the Honey Spot project. I know you mentioned the windows and the roof. That was the two that I had in mind. What about the exterior entrances or any of the storefronts? There's no leaking coming in at saddles, door jams. No. The exterior is holding up well. Yep, the doors are fine. So the three, the three um, exits that have four of them actually, they're they're, they're fine. I got no issues with water coming okay. in those at all. That's good. Fantastic yeah. to hear that. And then on the capital improvement plan, are there any things, projects that were f possibly funded? in the current budget that just activated where we'll need to do any kind of surveying, engineering, architectural drawings this summer and then do the actual work summer 2024. So one of the, one of the, the projects that's on there that um, Eli Whitney is always kind of short of parking. Um, Rob Terry had asked about getting a survey done to be able to increase the parking down there, which would cut into the ball field. Um, so you hear from some people that the ball field really doesn't get used, and some people say, "Oh, the townspeople all use it," and, but because they, they do, they have no parking there. They, they have the parking in the back. In the back, it's still not enough. Yeah, we did that like what twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. at least. Yeah, well, so, not twenty, fifteen. So? Well, I think I was on the council when I first got on one. Oh, so never thinking about doing that. that. Yeah. yeah, because it's horrible parking. So that was one of the topics for a capital improvement, which would have to have a study done to see what we can do and what we can't do. A there. study or a survey? A survey. Sur okay. Yeah, a survey see what the we can and what yeah. we can't do. Um, it would need an 8 20 review as well because you're changing the use from field to parking. Right. Because mm -hmm. I think you'll end up eating a good portion of the field. Yes. Unfortunately. I mean, if the, if the field, you know, I don't know what the usage of it is, but if it's not being used. Yeah. It's still a um, mud puddle a lot of times. It is. I think you guys fixed the, the, the front parking lot to the right. It used to be a big... Yes. No, it's just so I think that, it's would be a town, it that would be a, yeah. a town's project mm -hmm. for that. Uh, we put the... I you took know. a look because you mentioned that one mm -hmm. other time, and I took a look the last time, and nobody parks in that area still because it does collect the water. Oh, that's right yeah. in the very beginning. Yeah. I actually yeah. took Tom Arnold out there. Or, Keep calling up Tom Arnold, Tom Albert from the town. I was like, there's something we could do about losing four spots that are always underwater. Because at first he says, no, yeah, we fixed it. And I went, I took a picture and I went, yeah, no, it's still fixed. full of water. But yeah, I think they just need to raise it or they need to drain it so, out somehow. So somebody fixed it, but it didn't fix the problem. It didn't fix the problem, correct. Because it's still, yeah, yeah, that's still there. So on the topic of parking, you guys are saying you would need to do a survey. Is, um, Stratford High, just not a consideration for a survey or whatever to add additional parking over there? Because I'm just wondering if you guys are going to survey that school, maybe survey, you know. There's no, there's nothing there's no at Stratford area. High okay. to even there's okay. yeah. to make it yeah. a, not even one parking spot, unfortunately. <laughs> we already, we already <laughs> maximized Stratford yeah. High. <laughs> Believe yeah. me, to, yeah. to make Stratford High's footprint bigger, you're talking about going through more federal uh, mm -hmm. EPA map yeah. updates. And, uh, and yeah. that turf field is actually used quite a bit. It is. It is. So every, every time every day. I drive by there, regardless of what hour, even early 6.30, 7 on a Saturday, yeah. up until dusk, you know, sure. there's constantly yeah. either students or adults that are on that field using it. Yeah. It's, uh, that, that really makes me feel good. Yeah, when I when they put it up, my thought was, who's going to use that? It's tiny, you know. But it's good. It's like when you it's when you drive by Nichols in the basketball. I remember they put the trailers out there at one point. I thought that was the most ridiculous because that's like one of the most used spots. Kids are out there playing basketball. Yeah, then it helps day and night, but mostly kids. That one really. Is yeah. True. Same with Worcester, I think, or, or yeah. some of the. Yeah. And I know they're starting to go out. They they use the uh, lordship ones since they put all the new. Oh, okay. They put the same ones that are at yeah. uh, Worcester out yeah. in lordship. So those do get used to quite a bit, which is good because it some place to come. All right, thank you for the update, Mr. Rogerio Allen. Anything for building needs? No, everything's going um, pretty smoothly. I know that the um, the town uh, building needs committee didn't uh, have a formal official meeting in September, but um, the town council nonetheless acted on the um, Wooster Middle School second hill lane 
um, Stratford High um, photovoltaic projects. So in addition to Chapel, and it looks like Stratford High going next. Coming soon will be uh, Wooster and Second Hill Lane, um, following not too far behind. And um, Chapel is on that list as well. So it looks like Chapel, Stratford High are gonna go first, and then like I was saying, Wooster, Second Hill Lane will kind of um, follow. Um, I don't believe there's really been any change order related activity for the, um, the capital projects. And um, the only thing I want to bring up again so it kind of doesn't get lost in the shuffle is uh, the Stratford High project is um, not 100% closed out yet. Um, were you carbon copied on the email that came out from the new project manager from CREC kind of programming out a financial closeout of that project? All right, I'll get that over to you. It went to, um, it went to Pam. And who's the woman who works at Pam in that office? Susan Hughes. Yes. So I'll send that um, send it over to you so you kind of see what's going on. Um, does the, as the final closeout, does the does the board need to vote on it? As, as so just a by state statute, there's a form. It's called uh, I think it's the EDO 49F that I believe it requires a superintendent's signature and it does require board of that approval. Um, but outside of that, the board of education could. Um, make a motion um, saying that the school is complete and has been accepted and is in use. And that's in this um, email that I'll forward over to you. My push in that is I would like to see kind of your, you know, yours and Andrea's and, and Amy's board handle it. You guys were kind of, you know, made some of the final decisions. I remember when we did the topping out party for the second phase of the building. I think you were there for the ceremony. I didn't make it. You didn't make it to that one, but I know Amy, Amy signed the beam. I don't know if others of you signed the beam, but I feel like you guys kind of, you know, still have a connection to the project. So I'd like to see you act on it. I know it's in the correct report. They're looking for it. I don't think Pam can do that EDO form yet because it does literally need like every finalized cost known, and we're not quite there yet. So, um, so it does the so if it needs a board vote, would we be would the board be voting to? approve it when it's completed or, or? It would essentially be identical to the two motions you put through at your last meeting. You're just gonna strike the reference to the EDO 49F form. You're gonna accept the project as complete and the building put in use, and then we can do the EDO form later. So I guess just making sure that, because we have basically one board of ed meeting left, just making sure that all the you know, whoever it is follows up to make sure that everything's in place and that we know what we're doing and that we're not voting on something prematurely that's going to... That was going to be my question, is like, what are the, what kind of um, risk is there? What are any... There, there, isn't, there isn't any. I mean, you're basically just kind of saying that the school district has beneficial use and occupancy of the building. And there's no um, risk of... A, a, an invoice getting changed or any like so that will hold up that will hold up that EDO 49F form is not having all of the costs finalized mm -hmm. but in the um, in the documentation I'll share with you I apologize for not having sent that over to you earlier there's a separate piece about accepting the project as complete okay. so the EDO 49F is more kind of like financial mm -hmm. final you know lien releases no more fiscal responsibility with the project. The motion is more that the facility is done in use, properly constructed. Um, I believe the last of the temperature control issues have been resolved in the last three or four weeks. Well, they'll never be fully resolved, but in terms of changing resolved. out compressors. Changing them out, they changed them out a lot. <laughs> they didn't just change one. No, they I know. They changed them out multiple times. So what? So, where, we're so what's, not, what's the status of it right now? Um, there is not. There's no air conditioning in there right now. I don't know if the units are. Did the compressors burn out again? I have not heard. But I do know one of the guys from the town is there to this point because I just got a letter from a woman who was in there doing some uh, teaching from not in, not in our school system, and they were boiling in the room. And I know it, but I can't do anything about it. So, don't, don't you go back to the architects and the people that engineered this? I think that's what they're doing right now. Oh my God. God. Yeah. Can I ask a question? So, Rich, uh, may I, hold on a second. Okay. You just said, you know, working with the, um, 
I'm sorry, I forgot the, was it, you said the contractor or whoever about the AC? The question I have is something like the air conditioning, which is a known issue, right? If the board were to approve saying the project is closed, what kind of liability does any well, of those companies have? Like, I don't want the board saying, yes, it's done, and then they're going to say, well, we're not obligated to fix well, anything that's, because that's you've authorized that's what, that the right, project that's is what done. We're trying to figure that out. Okay. Yeah, but, but as you know, the contract you've put in would say around those prints and everything else. And all the, you True. Know, all that. So I go back to the original architect, I go back to your engineering department, I go back and find out what the hell they did here. There's, they're they're going to be liable. Right. So again, the, More town than the, is working, the town is working through all that right now. So. The, the, the wrinkle on that, Pete, is that specific to how these ductless systems work? It yeah. was a delegated design piece. So yeah. it's I mean, a Rich, little. I, I mean, I hear you. I mean, it's, who designs that? I just want to know why it's not, all this money, why it's not working. Mm -hmm. I mean, never mind the contract, because I ran a lot of jobs. Like, yeah. Last one before I got to the connect, close wall, I closed that all in. We only put on what they put with those architects and engineering yeah. people tell us. So we got to go all the way back to this architect, whoever that is, and then put the onus on them to get to, to, to the engineering of people, to get back to the contract, whoever they did. Yep. Whoever planned this and designed this, they're, they're so responsible for this yeah, type of work. So, so they, did, they did get a contractor in there to start going through this board. Mm -hmm. um, again, he does one okay, Again, but it's hard, but Rich, it's new. Why would we have to get somebody to come in and take a look at this stuff if it's not right? From the start, from just the start, as you buy things brand new, it doesn't mean they're always going to work. Rich, right? I've been in construction 47 years. I listen. I mean, a lot of years. I'm telling you something right now. Whatever's on that print, and whatever we put in, we put in there. If it's not right, don't come to me because I only put in what you people told us we're putting in. Correct. And I yes. told my men what to put in. Comes back to whoever designed that building, whoever the engineering, whoever. Al, you say it's a, a, a yes. new system. Fine. Then whoever put that system in better know what the hell's going on. Why all of a sudden we got to have a replace all these compressors and do all, all this money and everything going out the door. That's, that's bullshit, excuse me. That's bullshit. That's unbelievable. I mean... Tell us how you're wrong. To what Pete's talking about, there are discussions, there are discussions that are ongoing that are being held. I'm not privy to all the details of them. We're having a building needs committee meeting on Monday night, and I'll try to get an update. <coughs> and we also usually hear, you know, get some staff reports from teachers at Stratford High about what's going on and, and how they're doing. It's just like if it doesn't work in the classroom, they go to the teacher. Then the teacher goes to the principal. Those are the principal. They go to the superintendent. Then they go to the board of education. Somebody's got to be responsible. And it starts with the architect and whoever they hired to be their engineers, whoever they hired to design. That's their problem, not not the contractor's problem. I don't know who the contractors were on any of that job, but all I'm just saying is something. It's got to go back from where it starts. It stinks from the head down. That's not crazy. I, I can't believe all that money is spent here and it's not working. That's How much have we, extra have we spent constantly replacing? The yeah. There is, and it's all warranty. It's warranty, yeah. okay. Yeah, we keep replacing them. Like you say, it's been replaced many it's times. It's crazy. It's the length of the, I heard, it's the length of the coils. Yeah, I have not. We, we delayed the commissioning and accepting the HVAC system as complete until they could demonstrate that it was done. So we've kind of done anything and everything we can to protect ourselves. I, I, listen, I understand, I appreciate that, but I'm just trying to tell you, all this money for school, and the air conditioning doesn't work, damn school's a year old, two years old, the best. Uh, it's, the piece for, for me, I, I know. I, Professionally, by day, I work in healthcare facilities doing operating rooms yeah. that are much more complicated and HVAC intensive than I'm schools. I'm doing hospitals too, but I'm just trying okay, to tell you something. Somebody's got to be responsible for it. Exactly. I take the art to whoever is taking right to, right to court. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm wishing you to tell me that. Jesus. <laughs> You're all nice and kind. Well, no, but I mean, I just don't understand I'm, all this I'm money that doesn't work. And everybody, well, we're past. Don't keep past them. Get them. No, we're not. God damn it. We're not. We didn't. We, there was a lot of well, financial. Well, before you do this F39 or whatever you're talking about, let's get to make sure this stuff is work. That's the financial. Yeah. Okay. The well, financial, $128 million. 126. 127 million. Okay. You tell me that that doesn't, you put that out there in the public let them know. For 129, we would have working. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's great. That's, that's, that's just wild. Wow. All right. Um, are we done discussing this?
Yes. Huh? And frustrating. Oh, very we frustrating. Have no old business, new business. We can move on from that. Our next Just meeting. A question. Okay. Quick question. So obviously you guys all know that our last official meeting would be December 7th. It'll be a change in board. I was just about to. People, does everybody, do you guys want to stay on the committee when it gets reintroduced? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. So feel free yeah. to email okay. if you are interested, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Can we resubmit an application or just an indication? Of I think a written request. Yeah. Well, in the time, and I don't know who's going to be the chairman and, and whatever it is, but just whoever it is, I can let them know or we can make the decision. Maybe copy Dr. Sunday on it so we have the so. record to pass on to whoever's in that. Yeah. I think you guys did it, applications or did forms for this session. So we'll yeah, it, it, it's one last apply. phone call we got to make, but we know who to send the application or where to start at least. Yeah. So. Mr. Beek will do send an emails requesting to stay on the committee. Can they please? either copy me or send it to me because yeah. I'll be the one actually compiling all of that. Yeah, and obviously it'll be a vote by the full board and whatever it is, right. but just so we have some starting some starting spots. Great, so you covered that item on the agenda. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.